Hmm, I wonder why people hate this game so much. Oh, that's why! Flat Out 3 Case and Destruction is the third installment in the Flat Out series, and it's also the most hated game out of all of them. And as of recording this video, it holds the record of being the worst rated game on Steam, at 12% with overwhelmingly negative reviews. And I just wanna say, never has a title fit a game more perfectly than this. Because this game flat out sucks, and it costs nothing but chaos and destruction to its entire franchise. But what exactly happened to this game for it to receive all the hate it deservingly got? Well, that's what we're gonna explore in today's video. I've been focusing solely on games that I think would be great to buy at bargain prices that I completely overlook the dark side of budget gaming. In this series, we'll be highlighting the games that are cheap not because they're on sale, but because they're absolute sh**. Without further ado, welcome to Craft Fest. Ew. Flat Out 3 is a racing game that's best known for its uh, destructive qualities. It bursted out of existence like an unwanted xenomorph in December of 2011. It was published by Strategy First and developed by Team 6 Game Studios. And here is where the first problem of this game lies. The first two games of the series, which were beloved by their fanbase and critics, were developed by a completely different studio, Bugbear Entertainment. I don't completely know the reason why they're not the ones who developed the third game, but upon researching, they released a racing game called Ridge Racer Unbounded in March of 2012, so that may be a reason as to why they couldn't work on the game. And according to one of the developers, they don't own the rights to the franchise. Now, I'm not saying a game from an established franchise being handled by a different developer is a bad thing. Just look at what happened to Tomb Raider. After Core Designs failed to produce successful sequels to the original game, it was handed over to Crystal Dynamics and they successfully reinvigorated not only the franchise, but also my irrational fear of dying brutally. Sometimes a fresh set of eyes can do wonders for a game. But that's not what happened here. At all. This game felt like a student was forced to write a paper on a subject they didn't like one bit. And to Team 6's credit, or not, this wasn't even their first try at taking racing games. Looking at their track record, get it? Track record? This is a racing game. <laughs> anyway, looking at their track record, they have quite a handful of racing games under their belt. They've created classic racing games such as, uh, Super Taxi Driver? Sh anyway, this also isn't even their first attempt at making a flat out game. In November of 2010, they released the port for Flat Out on the Nintendo Wii, which got poorer reviews than the original made by Bugbear. Foreshadowing much? My initial reaction upon playing the game was that it was an absolute mess. It was like the game knew what it was supposed to be, but it didn't quite know how to get there. And this isn't one of those games that are so bad that it's good either. You know that moment when you take a dump so massive, that before flushing, you stared at it for a bit thinking, Wow, now that sh**. And then flush it away forever to be completely forgotten? That's kind of how I felt playing this game. Now, I'm not an expert when it comes to racing games. I'm a casual observer to the genre at best, with my only credentials being having played Mario Kart and Need for Speed Underground, which are both fantastic, might I say. So I'm not gonna go super in-depth with this one. Rather, I'm gonna go look at it through the point of view of a casual fan. I'm gonna review it based on Gaga. And no, I'm not talking about the singer. Gaga stands for Gameplay, Audio, Graphics, and AI. Four things that I think are essential for making good racing games for casuals like me. Alright, let's go! Flat Out Tree's driving mechanics uh, exists. And that's as close to a positive I can say about that topic. It's mediocre at best and headache inducing at worst. And I understand that it's supposed to be over the top with it being a destruction based racing game and all. But there's a difference between being over the top and just being bad. It's like they focus on the case and destruction too much and forgot about everything else. The best comparison I can use is that it felt like driving in an open world sandbox game. But in a game like Grand Theft Auto for example, you'd understand if the driving felt a bit off because that isn't the main focus of the game. But having that in a racing game? Inexcusable. But do you want to know what the main theme of the game is? It's quantity over quality. Like seriously, instead of creating a great racing experience, they just made a mediocre one and thought, how can we maximize the f out of this? That's why you have 10 game modes to choose from, and none of which are fun. You have race, which is called that but doesn't feel like it. Stuntman mode, which is your stress reliever every time you remember that you actually purchased the game. Off-road, which you can already do in the standard race, so what's the point? Night shift, which is basically just driving in the rain. 
exhilarating challenge which gives you 50 unique challenges to make racing more fun such as finish first in a racing game amazing monster truck where you get big bulky cars and what do you do with it that's right destroy barrels speed which is the same as race but with f1 cars splat out a game mode where you can run over zombies and i just want to say if you're gonna make us kill zombies at least make them threatening they're just standing there this feels more like a hit and run simulator if anything else like seriously how did you manage to make me pity zombies and finally the cream of the crap big battle and battle arena the most chaotic and destructive of all the game modes I can honestly see the appeal of a car-centric battle royale, but only if the gameplay is polished enough for me to have fun. But if you already have a mediocre driving system, and you pair that with a damage system that feels so random, that's just a recipe for disaster. This would be a lot more fun if you had weapons on board, or even just better gameplay. But with the way the game is, it felt so wrong and unpolished. I much preferred just slamming onto a wall to end the match. Thank you. To continue with the theme of quantity over quality, Flatout 3 offers a wide variety of cars to choose from. Which sounds like a positive at first, but when every car feels the same to drive, then why even bother? Oh, and let's not forget the multitude of drivers you can choose from. They all have different personalities, but they have zero impact on gameplay whatsoever. And seriously, you have two characters named Bob. You took the time to model a brand new character but couldn't be bothered to think of a new name? Outstanding. All in all, it definitely felt like the developer focused on the wrong things and were a bit too ambitious with the scope of the game. Why ambitious? This game has multiplayer. Ridiculous. I think with racing games, it's either you like driving with cool tunes playing, or you just want to listen to the sound of that roaring engine as you leave your opponents in the dust. Unfortunately, neither is a good option for this game. Playing Flat Out 3 without music is just listening to a perpetual car crash. It might be tolerable in race mode if you're good at avoiding these maniacs, but when you play Battle Arena, oh my god! Where's the nearest wall? Whew. So your only remaining option is to play with music. Bad idea. The music in this game is so bad and repetitive, like seriously, I've heard soundtracks from older games, even Flash games that sound better than whatever this is. I understand if you don't want to get licensed music, but at least create something better than what is essentially a glorified drum loop. Luckily for us, there is another option, which is to mute the game, then close it. Forever. Also, it's so hard to take this game seriously when their sound effects sounds like it came from Cinema Sins. Oh, lucky for you, I'm not counting all the sins you've committed. This game came out in 2011, and it definitely looks like it did. The car models look decent, the humans, eh, uh, not so much. To put it simply, the assets look okay. And also, while playing, the constant bumps and crashes will wreck your vehicles and your surroundings. Which is good, because at least there's a purpose for all that carnage. I don't have a problem with how the assets look. My problem with the game, however, is the way that they use these assets. For example, the tracks in this game are so forgettable. Off the top of my head, I think there's off-road, racetrack, and city. That's as memorable as it comes. Each stage just feels like the previous one with a different filter on it. And this isn't just a matter of looks. The tracks honestly don't feel different from each other at all. Apart from a few varying obstacles here and there, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between them. I'm not saying every stage should be as unique as Rainbow Road for example, but at least make them feel different from one another. I'm also not a fan of how excessive some game modes look. Like in Battle Arena for example. What is this? There's already 24 cars fighting and driving all around and causing mayhem on screen. Do you really need to further overwhelm my senses with whatever these are? This is too much. Wall! Ah, <sighs> thank you. The AI in this game is not good. They're not challenging or enjoyable to race with because they're such clumsy drivers. Racing with them honestly felt like everyone was forced to take 10 tequila shots before going behind the wheel. It's like they were designed to focus on causing the most chaos imaginable and not to actually win the race. For example, the game mode Night Shift is supposed to be the most challenging mode of the game. I beat it on my first try, and I'm not even good at this game! 
and all because my lone competitor crashed and burned a few laps ago. And they don't get any better in other game modes either. In battle-centric modes, I feel like they're only coded to do one thing. Hit whatever's near them. There's no real reason or strategy as to what they're doing, just random, unorganized action. I also really hate the damage system in this game because it's so inconsistent. How can a full speed ramming only net you 1% damage, but other things such as light bumping graces deal 4%? That throws any strategy you might have out the window. And remember, you have to beat 23 cars to finish this game mode. Your best bet to win is to play as the wall. Speaking of wall... Ah, better. Well, if playing with a computer isn't challenging enough, at least you can play online, right? Any minute now. To summarize, Flat Out 3 is the amalgamation of bad driving mechanics, horrendous audio, poor track design, bad AI, and the prioritization of quantity over quality. This game usually goes around for $9.99, but I got it on sale for a dollar, and even at that low price point, it still isn't worth it. You'd be better off just eating your money. At least you'll have a chance of getting it back after going through all that shit. And if my feelings towards the game is still not clear for you, then I made a song that summarizes what I truly think about the game. It goes something like this. Yeah. Let's go! Three, two, one, it sucks. It sucks. <laughs>